is such an awesome feeling. We just sent Seventeen USC one hundred and seven federal law allows citizens to use copyrighted media for fair use. That is criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody. Mishpaka, thank you and welcome, welcome, welcome to Into All Truth. Just give me a thumbs up or a and a number one. If you can hear me, can you hear me? Just give me a number one. Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, JJ. I'm saying shalom to everybody. The Mishpakale. <laughs> Hi, guys. So today I just want to lift you up to Yahuwah and Baruch Atah, And I pray Yahuwah will surround us in his holy presence. Be a fire around us and a fire in the midst of us. Cover us, protect us, guide us, lead us into all truth by the Ruach HaKodesh and show us things to come, purify us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness and give ears to the hearers, give them eyes to see and a heart to understand. So the seed of righteousness and fruitfulness in their hearts so that we may be acceptable and pleasing to you, Yahuwah, and put down the enemy in all of our sin. Let us walk in your likeness in every way, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, I pray. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Mishpaka. So today I'm just doing a teaching on the day, doing a teaching on the day. And the reason why I wanted to do that was to just give people clarity on how the the day starts basically. And so uh, let's get into it. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to try and watch the live chat. I know I'm broadcasting a little bit early, but I, you know, I'm working on my Beasts of No Nation video, which I have to get out this weekend. I really feel like I should be doing videos once a month or something, but because I do so much work. But anyway, welcome, family so nice to have you here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the day. We're going to talk about the day. And I think what we might just do is start with the basics of the day and how we calculate it. The day is uh, a 12-hour um, day and there is a night watch and the day and the night are separate from one another. We're going to go into that. But first, let's just clarify in the Anakian calendar, there are 365 days. 
300 and sorry 364 days 364 days not 365 and not 354 i heard somebody saying 354 the other day i was like what on earth are they talking about then i googled the enochian calendar <laughs> and somebody said um it was it was some kind of weird thing I'd never seen before. It was 354. So if you Google, you'll that's what you'll get. But if you look into it, it's 364 days. Uh, it is a 360 day prophetic year with four transitional days, which make up the 364. OK, so each season starting in the spring, you use one day to transition from winter to spring. Then you use another to transition from spring to summer and then another from summer to autumn and then another from autumn to winter. So those are the four days that make up the 364. And of course, I've said to many of you, welcome, Ben Yehuda, that one of the things that we learn as Israelites is that the four people of the 400 years are the 144,000. And I got somebody, I got this off somebody from my channel uh, last year around this time. And basically, when you divide the prophetic year, the 360 day prophetic year into uh, or 400 years, you get 144,000 days. So 400 years times 360 days, right, equals 144,000 days. So the 144,000 Malachim come out of the 400 year captivity, which has did not happen in the first exodus and is part of the second exodus, part of revealing how the second exodus happens and who the people of the second exodus are and it's the final exodus so if you're ever curious to know these are the many small ways in which yahuwah approves this calendar and so there are 52 weeks in the years and there are, there are all these little things that correspond seven days there's seven days in a week not more than that all right and seven is a heavenly number and jubilees are mentioned in weeks and when they talk about the 70 weeks you're talking about jubilees so the multiple of seven is very holy because the shabbat is on the seventh day okay so i just want to emphasize these things there's way more things that you can learn on this page but when you get this prophetic calendar when you get this calendar then you'll be able to figure these things out it's aligned by the four corners of the earth as well so many ways in which it proves itself and proves the shape of the earth and so on all right so let's start to look at how we determine what a day is because we know first of all that yahuwah is a god of an elohim of just weights measures and balances and so everything has its origin, its first day, its beginning, OK? Everything has its beginning. And from there, from day one, you move forward to seven days. And so there's day one, there's week one, there's the first Shabbat, and the first month, OK? So we're talking about firsts. And so we want to figure out how do we determine the first day? And we know throughout scripture, Yahuwah says, I am Yahuwah, I change that not therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And that's in Malachi 3 and 6. So we know as a precept in all scripture, in all things that Yahuwah does not change. So if you see any deviation from his original prescribed order in anything or arrangement of things, it's usually sin and law breaking. Okay. So that is a first mention. That is a precept. All right. Now we're going to talk about the first day, and that is in Genesis 1 and 4. And I'm going to do a whole teaching on this later as part of the tree of life thing. So I've been wanting to do that teaching for a long time for you guys, but I'm just going to just briefly go into this, not in the way that I'm going to when I, when I go into it later in my video on the tree of life, just finalizing it. So Genesis 1 and 4 says, Yahweh saw the light that it was good, and Yahweh divided the light and the darkness. And Yahuwah called the light day, and the darkness 
he called night and the evening there was evening and there was morning and this was the first day so evening first and i used to believe differently about this guys so you may see some contradictions in the calendar if i've made some errors but it is evening first and then morning and this is because yah was the first light all right, how can you talk about light if there was no light source? Well, Yahuwah, his word was the first light, and that's in Genesis 1 and 4, when he says, let there be light. This is when he says, let there be light, and Yahuwah saw that the light was good, and this was the first day. So we know that the day portion of the day starts with light. OK, but that but because we see in this consecutive order and Yah usually orders things according to their order that the evening was first and then there was morning, then there was the day. And that's because he created the light out of the so-called darkness. OK, so it's evening first and then morning, but the two are not one. All right. However, a day is a portion that combines them both. It's a portion of time. OK. Now, here's some more precepts. Yah says in Deuteronomy, you shall not add to the word which I command ye, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh, your creator, which I command you. And if any man shall add unto these things, OK, if you add anything to his word, then he that if any man shall take away from the words of this prophecy, so you will get you'll either get the plagues added to you that are written in the book, or if you take away words, he'll take away your part in the book of life. OK, so don't add to or take away from the words. So when I'm referring to these other books like Jubilees, Jasher's, Targum, all of this kind of thing, you can think of them as historical books or or even Enoch, although Enoch was found among the Dead Sea Scrolls and it is very common. I am still saying that the book that we see in the King James Version or the Septuagint, that that is the original scripture. And so that is that is what I say. OK, but there are some very reliable books that I believe that are part of it, too. But I'm not. Yeah, so I'm not going to say for sure. Right. All right. So now another precept is Proverbs 20 and 10. Differing weights and measures are an abomination to Yahuwah. So this is why when we look at calendars that say there's 365 days, that would be an error because that is a differing weight and measure. It's not even, OK? When they talk about leap years or weeks, that's not even. When they talk about a 13th month in the Julian calendar, that is not an even amount of, it's not equal weights and measures, OK? And so, um, the word says, do not add to or take away from the words. So we're not going to add days. We're not going to add months. And we're not going to add weeks. And we're not going to add years to the word. Because there's nothing in the word that says, oh, and add another day or add another week. There's a leap week. There's nothing in scripture that says that. So why would we do that? Right? Because the enemy would seek to change times and laws. Right? That was the prophecy when Israel went into captivity. So these are the signs and indications that you will have that the enemy is afoot. He's working on those things. There's unequal weights, measures, and balances. He's adding, he's taking away. This is how you recognize his work. He's the father of lies, okay? And the author of confusion. All right, so let's get into the day defined. The day starts with the sun. So this is the sun portion of the day. The night before is the same date, but you do not call it the day. You call it the night, OK? But that whole period of time, that slice of the pie of the 30 days that are in the month, that single day that combines the night portion of the day and the day portion of the day is one thing. However, they are separated. All right. There's a scripture that here that says 
are there not 12 hours in the day? Meaning the morning and the night are separate. And Isaiah 21, 12 says the morning cometh and also the night. So that's a separate clause. You know, it's a separate clause or it could be a separate sentence because there's a comma and an ad. The word and, okay? So you could say the morning cometh, period. Also the night cometh. So they could be two separate things. So they are two separate things. And that's Isaiah 21, 12. All right, so here's the creation account again. And Yahuwah said, let there be light. And there was light. And Yahuwah saw the light that it was good. Good. So he calls the light good. And he divides the light from the darkness. And then Yahuwah called the light day and the darkness he called night. So he names light first. Then he names the night. And then he says, the evening, night, and the morning were the first day. Now, it's interesting because my thought is on this, and this is just my thought in the spirit, that it wasn't really, really dark because he calls it evening, right? And because he was there, there was no sin, nothing wicked around. All right. But that's just my little thing. Okay. That's not that that's not law. Don't take that, you know, study to show yourself approved, right? Because remember, I am one who proclaims the word. I do the word of uh, work of a mora, but I am not your rabbi. Okay. The spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh is your teacher and the word of Yah. Okay, so then 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1 says, since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of our hope of salvation. So we belong to the day. The day has a special place in the mind and spirit of Yah. Okay, so this is why it's separated and it's named first. Interesting, because it's more special. All right. Okay, so now we're going to start to look at how the day is divided. And here's we're going to get into some some kind of quirky particular stuff here, because there's a lot of error out there. All right. And we already went into Passover. By the way, a second Passover is coming, family. So just I pray I remember to tell you guys at the end, remember to get my calendar and try to eat life and fast to observe these appointed times and the laws of Yahuwah regarding food, get some good rep recipes, fasting, that kind of thing, and learn about the health of the body and uh, in relation to the divine order, the divine procession of life. Hallelujah. So John 11, 9 says, once again, are there not 12 hours in a day? And if any man walketh the day in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. So now we know the day is divine by what? 12 hours. How many hours? 12. Okay. And then the night has four watches. How do we know? Here's some scriptures. We find that sacrifices are done in the morning and the evening before the sun is whole in the sky. And when the sun is setting, that means it's halfway, it's on the horizon, halfway down. Okay. So Judges 7 and 19 says, Gideon and his company came to the camp at Midian in the beginning of the middle watch or at midnight. Okay. So that means there's watches in the night. They don't talk about um hours necessarily in some scriptures they do i think in the new testament but they talk about watches so it seems to have been it's divided differently okay exodus 29 and 38 says now this is what thou should offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year day by day continually okay so every day every single day the one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning and the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening, at evening. So that's when we're going to find out that's when the sun is right on the horizon. Okay. Halfway down the horizon. Leviticus 7 then says, 
and the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten on the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. Okay. Now, like what I've said before is that at evening when the sun is going down and it's halfway on the horizon, that is a new day, actually. Okay. That's a new day because it starts in the evening. It actually doesn't start. That's why he says the evening in the morning, because it doesn't actually start at night in the darkness. It just starts in the even sky. It is half lit. Okay. So it's not a total darkness. All right. Lamentations rejoice in the night at the beginning of thy watch. Pour out thy heart as water before the face of Yahuwah. So this is, again, referring to the watch. Okay, here's another one. When Psalm 63 and 6, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night. What? Watches, watches, watches of the night. And what a privilege it is to stand before your throne. In the watches of the night. All right. So the watches of the night. Hallelujah. All right. Exodus 16. And then they took their journey from Elam. Now I'm going to go into this part and we're going to start talking about how the, this is an error that is made by everybody about how to begin to count the Shabbat. They think that, um, you use the moon or you use some other kind of calendar because here is an error that is in scripture that shows the wrong day for the first Shabbat rest they have before they begin to collect manna and before they're fed from heaven with quail. So we're going to go into this, but we understand what the night watches are. So now, sorry, guys, I, I just got a little bit ahead of myself there. We're going to look at Exodus 16, Exodus 16. Okay. And this is often a mistake people make to measure when the Shabbat is and they, to un understand and comprehend it's a strange number. And so it must be the moon that's dictating when you know, the week starts and everything. And that's simply not true because the, the month is exactly 30 days. It's exactly the same time every year. I don't believe in atomic clocks that people have made up and we don't understand. And I don't believe in the solar calendar where, where we're going around the sun. I believe in what Yah's word says, okay? And, and Enoch is referred to often in scripture. So, Exodus 16, and they took their journey from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. So this is between Mount Sinai and Elim. So they were journeying from there as probably around the time they crossed the Red Sea. And this was on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And so what happens is that at this particular time, they complained to Moses and Aaron about having no food. And it was Shabbat because we know the next day and that night, actually, what Yah does is he promises to feed them. So this is the beginning of how they learn to observe the week and the days of the week to lead up to the Shabbat. And so he's, again, returning the law to them that they had before, but which they no longer have. Okay. So what it says here is Yahuwah then says, Yahuwah says, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak to them saying towards the evening, even skies, okay, even light, ye shall eat flesh and in the morning, so difference, ye shall be satisfied with bread and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And it was evening. So now a little time jump. Suddenly it's evening. And quails came up and covered the camp. You guys, I love quail. <laughs> it's make me hungry. And then it says, in the morning it came to pass as dew ceased round about the camp that behold, on the face of the wilderness was a small thing like white coriander seed as frost upon the earth. 
Okay, now actually there's a place in Africa where they still pick this stuff up, interestingly enough. I should have brought that video for you guys. But anyway, it says, so that's how you know that they rested the night before and then now they begin their first day. And it starts in the evening when they're fed with quail, just like the evening they left, they ate the lamb, right? And now the evening they arrive on the day they, they are observing in a Shabbat and then in the evening starts the first day, okay? So it says, this was on the 15th, however. Now, if it was the 15th, when we do the math, right, it would have been the 45th day because what, 30 plus 15 is 45. So that would mean it's not the Shabbat, okay? Because that's 6.3 that's 6.3 weeks. So that's like six weeks in like, I don't know, two or three days. And that wouldn't be the Shabbat. And so I did the math and I'm like, well, you know, six times seven would be 42. And now, so it would be the third day. So that's not the Shabbat. So how can they start these six days afterwards and then go and connect the quail that night? And then for six days straight every morning. So it, it the, this would have had to have been the Shabbat, but the math wasn't right. So then I went and I looked it up on Strong's Concordance. And it says the word is Hamish, 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 Hamish. And this is Strong's H2568. Okay, Strong's H2568. All right. And... When you look at the, uh, it occurs, this word occurs 343 times. So they use the word 15 for this. But then when you look at the Strong's translation, it translates as the number five, 300 times. And then 15, 16 times. And then another time as 15, 16 times. 15 times, sorry. And then six times is 15 in another case, and three times um, as a different variant. 15, three times, and then another variant once. So 16, 15, and 15, that's like about 45 times 48. But look, Strong's 25, 68 is always the number five. These all have different Strong's numbers. These are 6240, 6240. And this one is H7657. This isn't even the right Strong's number, but they stuck it in there to fool you, to confuse you. Okay, they stuck it in to confuse you. So the real translation of that word is not the 15th it's the fifth so when you add 30 days plus five days you get 35 days and seven goes into 35 five times so it was the shabbat day it was the seventh day it was the fifth week from the beginning of the first month so it actually was the Shabbat. So you guys got to watch out for these tricks, this technology. So indeed, they arrived on the fifth day of the month. Sorry, I hope I'm not pouring you guys with this. But these are the tricks that they play. These are the tricks they play on you to confuse you into thinking it's all about the moon and it's not, or it's all about the sun and it's not. It's about Yah is the light. All right, so... The night and the evening defined as watches, not hours. So Matthew 16, 12, Yahusha says, when it, in the evening ye shall say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. Okay, so when the light is even, the sky is red. Now this is not, a, this is not an even sky here. But if you notice when the sun is halfway down the horizon, it often, the sky often looks red, right? And then it says, when even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Yahusha's disciple. And he begged from Pilate the body of Yahusha. And then he commanded the body to be delivered, Pilate did. And when 
Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Okay, now it says when even was come. So this, what you see here is this is the letter Kuf. And it is a sun on the horizon. So this is the horizon and there's the sun, half of it above the horizon, half of it below the horizon. That's even because the sun is halfway up and halfway down. Okay, so it's in even on the horizon. All right. So now because you can't leave the body of anybody hanging on a tree overnight, you have to take it down so that it doesn't go into the night and hang on there overnight. Now, it isn't quite night yet. So what he does is he begs the body of Yahushua. It says, if any man has committed a sin worthy of death, he is to be put to death and thou hang him on a tree and his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of Yahuwah and thy land be not defiled that thy land be not defiled, which Yahuwah thy Alua giveth thee for an inheritance. So in other words, you need to put him in a tomb that night so that he is buried in the tomb, the womb of the earth that night. Okay, you don't leave him hanging on the tree. Okay, he's not supposed to be all night on the tree. All right, now here's another indicator. This is twilight, okay? So this is when you're in the night. You're actually in the night at twilight. Job 3 and 9 says, let the stars of the twilight be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. So there are stars at night that don't see the dawning of the day, and they're out in the twilight. So that is nighttime. That's a help to us to know that it's nighttime. Also in Job, it talks about the adulterer waits for twilight to come. So darkness, he covers his face so no one can see him. At night, thieves break into houses, but by day they hide and avoid the light for they fear the light of day, but darkness holds no terror for them. Okay, so at twilight, you see how you can have these silhouettes. You could be standing off in the distance in, twi in twilight and no one can see your face because you, you just are a shadow against a backdrop of fading light, right? So you can hide in the twilight and that's how you know it's part of the night, okay? And so when people go to sleep at night, they say Lila Tobe because it's kind of like Lila Tobe, good twilight, good night, right? Because the Hebrews would go to bed around that time because they'd get up early to work when the sun was rising. Now, here's another indicator. Jeremiah 3 and 16, honor Yahuwah your Allah before he brings darkness and you stumble on the mountains, before he turns deep darkness into deep darkness, the light you hoped for. So this tells us that darkness has no light in it, okay? And it can be deep and dark, okay? Now, there are four watches of the night. The first watch is in the evening or at sunset, okay? So that's when, again, the kuf, when the sun is halfway on the horizon. It's around five or six, dust to dark. And it's the daily disappearance of the bottom half of the sun below the horizon. This is the first watch. The dusk is the darkest stage of twilight after sunset, just before night, okay? And so that's the second watch, 9 p.m., till midnight happens after that. So from sunset into twilight, this is just before darkness. That's when the sky is this color, right? And there are actually sapphires that are purple and sapphires that are magenta and sapphires that are blue. Because like the sky, they take on these colors because the Shemaim is actually like a sapphire before the throne of Yahuwah is a sea of glass, of blue. Okay, that changes according to the light into these shades. That's why I use these colors. Okay. So the second watch is from 9 p.m. till midnight. So that's about three hours. Okay. So there, it's divided into quarters rather than 12. Okay. Then the third watch is about midnight till the cock crows. All right. So when we, we're going to go into this, when we talked about Pesach, you had to eat everything 
before the fourth watch. You had to burn it and destroy it before the fourth watch. Because the fourth watch is when the cock crows, and that is the time that marks the beginning of twilight again. It's a similar purple blue light. This is just before sunrise, and it's recognized by the appearance of indirect sunlight being scattered in the Earth's atmosphere. So again, it's this half light. So I did this one that's a little more blue, and this one's a little more twilighty purple periwinkle blue. Okay, so again, it's this indirect light, and then the dawn half light comes up. Okay, so that's how you know the night is ending. And that's why, remember, the cock crowed when Peter betrayed Yahusha it's by saying he didn't know him three times. The cock crowed. So that's how they knew the watches of the night were ending. And it was about to be sunrise. Okay, so the day almost was coming. All right, and so here's some more indicators of how we do this. And this should be quick, guys, this lesson. So we already talked about this before when we talked about Pesach. Now, you guys, there's another Pesach coming up. Just give me, give you guys a quick reminder. There are two Pesachs. Okay, there are two Pesachs. So if you miss the first one, you can catch the one in the second month, second Passover. I think I'm going to do it. And it's, it's here. Okay. On the 14th day of the month, that would be on the second of so called May. All right. So we can talk, we can talk about this in terms of Passover all over again, when it starts and everything, because I was just watching a teaching where they were saying that the Passover, well, we'll get into this. All right. The day is defined in 12 hours. And here we go. Here's how they observe the Passover. All right. According to Jubilees on the 14th of the first month, you should kill it before it is evening. So this is on the 14th. You kill it before it is evening. So you are on the day that is the 14th. You are in the sunshine portion of it. And you are sacrificing it at that time before you have this half light here, the kuf appearing. So the sun is up. It's above the horizon. Okay. So the sun is up. See? This is, this is morning because the sun is above the horizon. It's not on the horizon. It's above it, shining through this tree. Okay? So that's how you know it's daytime. So you kill it before the kuf appears, before the evening. And then you eat it by night on the evening of the 15th from the time of the setting of the sun. So when the sun becomes a kuf on the horizon, you just see half of it. You are now what? Between the evenings. So you eat it by night on the evening of the 15th from the time of the setting of the sun. So that's night. Night is when the sun is setting. It says, let the children of Israel kind of observe the Passover on the day of its fixed time. So it's always at the same time. It's not depending on the moon. On the 14th day of the first month, between the evenings. So the animal is killed before the evening in the sunshine portion of the day. And when it is evening, when the sun is halfway a kuf on the horizon, right? You observe it between the evenings, between the, the evening of the 14th and 15th, right? From the third part of the day, so that's the last portion of the day, to the third part of the night. For two portions of the day are given to light and one third to the evening. So this is why in Enoch, it'll talk about how there are could be 18 portions to the day. So if, if the day is 12 hours, that means there's six other hours that might be in the watches of the night. And of course, those can change. But in the land of Israel, the day is always basically 12 hours long. So when you go to Africa, basically the day is always 12 hours long. Okay. And so there's a third part of it that's given to the evening. And then it says it's not permissible to slay it during any period 
of the light, but during the period bordering the evening. Okay, so that means in those two portions, don't slay it. You slay it just before the evening. Okay, and that's because the Lamb of the Blood is going to seal out the darkness. Okay, that's why you slay it them. And it says, let them eat it at the time of the evening until the third part of the night. And whatever is left over all of its far flesh from the third part of the night onwards, let them burn it with fire. Okay, oh, so I had that wrong. It's a third part. You guys, this is like brain surgery. How anyone can presume to know the calendar <laughs> based on two precepts, I don't know, because this can be like brain surgery. All right, so you burn with fire whatever is left over from the third part of the night onwards. So you burn with fire whatever is left before the sun is a kuf to begin the to rise up to begin the morning. Okay. All right, and so again, this is the quote, when it is evening, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. It, when it is evening, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. So that's how you know it's evening, the sky turns red. When, if you go and watch the sunset, wherever you are in the city, you'll always see the sky turn red, okay? That's the evening when the sun is halfway on the horizon. We can pretend the horizon is here and it's halfway on the horizon. And then you say, in the morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. All right, so there's three parts of the day. And when we see the whole sun in full view, then we know the day has begun. So here is an image of full sun in full view. Also, here's another one here. See, there's, we see the sun. I mean, it could be right here is where we would want to see it, right? In the morning, as long as the sphere, the circle is above the horizon, that's how you know it's morning. Okay. All right. So sunrise is the morning when the sun and daylight appears full above the horizon. This is the stage of light. So this is when it's above the horizon, it's daytime, that's light. All right. And then you have um, high noon, sohar, which is when it's in its highest place. Dual double light is what it's called, midday noon the window of the day or the heat of the day. And then you have just before sunset, just before it goes beneath the horizon. And I believe that's when you, you kill it, kill the Passover lamb. Okay. And so again, we'll just review. Are there not 12 hours in the day? And the day includes the yom, includes the evening before. The morning is the day. Now, when we looked at them gathering the manna, right, in Exodus 16, he says, gather every man according to his eating and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Ye take you take every man to them which are in his tents. And Moses said, let no man leave any of it until morning. Notwithstanding, they harkum not to him, but some of them left it until morning and it bred worms and stank and Moses was wroth with them. So overnight, through the night it rotted, right, and had worms. And it came to pass on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, and he said to them, this is that which Yahuwah has said, tomorrow is the rest of the holy Shabbat, so this was that six-day period now, unto Yahuwah, bake that which you will bake today, and seethe that which you will seethe, that which remaineth over lay up you to be kept until the morning. So you can bake it, you can boil it to be kept until the morning on the Shabbat. Okay. And they laid it up until the morning and as Moses bade, and it did not seek stink, neither was there any worm in it. So that showed them that was the Shabbat time of rest. And that was the sixth day. Okay. So that's how we know that was the Shabbat. And that's how we know how the day starts. So to review, it is between the evenings that the day and the night are divided, okay? So the day is when the sun is just above the horizon, as in this image. It's so bright that they didn't take a direct photo of it, right? But you can see it's right above the horizon. That's the morning. There are four watches to the night. There are four watches. 
one at evening when you have the kuf on the horizon and that includes dusk and twilight and then there's the first dark which is until midnight then from midnight until the cock crows and then the morning or the e the evening of light begins after the cock crows when the sun then becomes half on the horizon and once it jumps above it that is morning okay so four watches of the night it's likely probably about six hours long in a world where the day is 12 hours all the time okay like in africa and so the day and the night are separate and uh, we know this because the sacrifices are usually around this time and the blood is used to seal out the darkness okay so uh, I hope that this is helping you. Shalom, Stacy. Hallelujah. And it's so nice to have you guys here. You know, I really appreciate you guys watching my teachings. I'm always like, wow, people are actually watching me. <laughs> I may sound very prideful and arrogant. I don't mean to. I'm just like, I get really, I take Yah's word really personally. I don't like when people speak against his word or his people or do not say that they're people that they're not and all this kind of thing. I don't like lies. Like a little irked about that but it's not pride it's really that I just kind of get upset for yeah right and for the people so um, I'm always happy when people watch my teachings or blessed so I really appreciate you guys being here and as I said you guys there is a second Passover coming up okay a second Passover so we already had the first Passover Okay, and now so I was just on another um, channel, and they were saying that um, the uh, the Passover was that you prepare the offering at night, and um, and of the fourteenth, and that's that's just it's it's I don't think that's accurate. And they said, well, one of the reasons why you do that before unleavened bread is that you have the feast. And then on that day, you then do preparation for the feast of unleavened bread. But that doesn't make any sense. Like with this calendar, you have the Shabbat is the actual Passover day. You have so-called six Friday, forgive me, the sixth day is always your preparation day. So you have your preparation day is just built in. And then you observe the slaying of the lamb that you've had from the 10th, right? So now you're four days, five days into that. And then you slay the lamb just at sunset. And then the next day, and you eat the unleavened bread with this slain lamb because the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts on the 15th and the 15th starts in that evening when you eat that meat, right? And then you go all the way through to the next and you have your high Shabbat here as part of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so these Shabbats, these holy days are landing on Shabbats. And so you're not necessarily having to ask for time off work and all that kind of stuff, right? So there's another one coming up, like I said, here in um, Shini Kodesh, so the second month. And so I'll probably talk about it then but thank you so much for watching you guys and uh once again uh if you would like to get this calendar i'll just show you some more of it it's just a really beautiful calendar it's a virtual calendar that you get and you can download it to your telephone it goes through all the feasts and i update it regularly i only send you guys updates if you email me i'm not going to be emailing you all the time i don't have time for that no one has time for that so I'm not going to be harassing you with emails. I don't like when people send me a ton of emails and I don't send a ton of emails to people. So it's just to keep you updated with the calendar. We have our wonderful winter months and spring and Purim, et cetera. Oh, I have an extra slide in here. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there it is. It's showing up right. And I also go over some of the numbers in here and what they mean. This is not gematria. I don't believe in that. Um, but I believe these numbers have some significance. And so um, I really invite you to just make a donation for this calendar. I give you this calendar as a gift for making a donation. And it's a virtual calendar. It's not an actual book. Okay. So just keep that in mind. All right. 
It's not an actual hard copy that you're going to get mailed to you. So you don't need to put your address in and everything. Uh, when you purchase it, you can just, um, just go ahead and, you know, obviously your email has to be there so you can send it. And when you get it from me, you guys confirm receipt. I'll ask for a delivery receipt and then you just confirm that you received it. Okay. So then we're not having um, any issues because some people are like, I didn't get it. And I'm like, I emailed it to you. So maybe it's in your junk mail or something. So just make sure you'll get it from livelightwell.com will be the email. And that's how you'll know you've got it. Okay. And um, so, yeah, so this is how you find it. You can either go to my, um, oh, shoot, what did I do there? What did I do? You can go, let me just share this here again. I'm not showing my face, guys, because I don't like to, I like to focus on the study. You know, it's not always about being on camera, right? It's about, yeah. So, um, so you just would go to, you can go to my channel if you want, and you can just click through this way. So you go to my channel, Into All Truth. Here's the channel. There's the broadcast is going. And you can see right here, it says calendar and cookbook. Just click here and that'll send you to my website. Or you can go into about and it will say calendar and cookbook. It's not really a cookbook. It's a, about Hebraic lifestyle, right? But that's just my short phrase. It should be really a lifestyle book. So you just can click here on the landing page, right? Right beside Into All Truth. You see it says calendar and cookbook. That'll take you to my site and the shop page. And then you just buy it here. And so that's Chaya Eat Life and Fast. And then here's the convocations. And so this is, it, it actually asks for a donation. So these are gifts for donation. You're not actually buying the book or calendar. You're, you're, that you're paying, but it's a donation to me for teaching. And it helps me keep these studies going, pay for my, well, I do get a donation from someone specific for my Zoom, but it helps me to pay for these things. And I really want to get to a place where I make a lot of my teachings into articles and books. And so then you can and make create a resource site where you can download the books. There's other people doing that. And I think it's a really good idea. So I want to do the same thing. So and you can also do a regular donation on here, which I would really appreciate. And you can also donate through the chat. You just uh, donate through the chat. Well, wait a minute. So here's the regular donation. You can go here to subscribe, or you can just hit, where is it? I had a donation button. What did I do? Oh, yeah, there it is. So you hit this, and it gives you an option to make a regular donation. that will be monthly recurring. Okay, so that's an option. And um, yeah, also, when this video is going, oops, you can go to the landing page and just in the chat, you can make a donation as well. I activated, I didn't have it activated for the longest time. It's gonna get some echoes here, but you can just hit this and make a donation with a super sticker or super chat. You can make a donation right now. So those are ways that you can support me. I appreciate it family. And I'm gonna let you go. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be it. So, um, Suba. Hallelujah. May Yah bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine on you. May he be gracious, lift the light of his countenance and give you shalom and peace, Mishpaka. I've got this multiple reflection going. So um, yeah, so there we go. There's the site and you just click on shop. Okay, so this again, the book helps you to get organized with meal planning, but it also helps you with fasting, healing diseases of the body. A lot of the stuff is in articles here that are on the site, but it's just one resource where you have everything, okay, that helps you to, to find healthy food and uh, live according to Yah's divine procession of life. Thanks. <laughs> Good night, Caesarina. I sent you another email on the calendar. <laughs> she and I are emailing about the calendar so but thank you so much for your patience and it's nice to see you love
All right, you guys, have a lovely day. Baruch atah, in the name of Yahusha Amunah. All right, or amen. Just gonna.